For our first example of how to use Lagrange multipliers, suppose we're given the problem of um, finding the max and min of the function x squared plus 4y squared on the ellipse x squared plus y squared equals 1. Okay, so this ellipse is actually a circle, but whatever. All circles are ellipses. So first thing is when, when you see this uh, constraint equation, then what you want to think is that this is the level surface where g is equal to 1 for the constraint function g being equal to x squared plus y squared. Okay, so that's your thought of how to interpret this problem. Um, now this is not necessarily unique. You could also do, um, you could think of this as uh, g equals 0 for the constraint function x squared minus y squared, sorry, plus y squared minus 1. Uh, that would give you the same level curve. Um, it's just the blue one is slightly simpler than the green one. Uh, now, why is it okay to use either of those? Well, I'll let you think about that. And, and probably you want to wait until after we've gone through the example to think about it. But, but maybe you'll circle back and, and figure it out. So let's see. So Lagrange multipliers says that we want to solve the system uh, gradient f equals lambda gradient g and g equals a constant for our system here, right? So let's see. So first off, the gradient of f for us. So we're going to be looking at uh, this function right here. So we take the partial with respect to x and we get 2x. And you know what? I'm going to write this as a column vector. Why not? It makes it a little bit more sort of graphically appealing. So here's 2x in the first coordinate, and then 8y in the second coordinate. And then this is supposed to equal lambda times, and then I take the gradient of g, and g is x squared plus y squared. So I have 2x, 2y for my gradient of g. OK. And so then my uh, system uh, becomes We've comparing um, the first coordinate here with the first coordinate here. Notice I'm going to multiply the lambda in to each coordinate. Uh, gives me 2x equals lambda 2x. 8y equals lambda 2y. And then I've also got my g equals c equation, which is x squared plus y squared equals 1. Okay, so there's my new and updated um, system after I do the computations. All right, so now let's see. So now how do I solve this nonlinear system in, in two variables with three equations? Well, I can simplify the first equation um, by subtracting across so that it looks like 2x times 1 minus lambda equals 0. And the next one uh, gives me, factoring out the 2y, I have 2y times 4 minus lambda equals 0. And I still have x squared plus y squared equals 1. OK, so from the first two there, um, let's see that the, the top one implies that lambda equals 1 will give me a solution. And the second one implies that lambda equals 4 will give me a solution. Um, <clears throat> there's also other things that would possibly work here, right? Like um, if x is equal to 0, and the second one suggests that if y is equal to 0, then I get a solution. OK, so we'll keep all that in mind. So we have multiple 
possible solutions. And in general, this is uh, what you'll find because a function can have many local minima and local maxima um, and saddle points and whatever else. So let's see. So we often have to work through these possibilities on a case by case basis. So let's see. So let's take the case when lambda is equal to one. Okay. So if lambda is equal to one, then what? Then our system is looking at the, the first equation just zeroes out. The second one becomes two y times three equals zero. So that's uh, this one. And <clears throat> from that we see that y is equal to zero. And if y is equal to zero, then x has to be plus or minus one coming now from the constraint equation. I'll just substitute y equals zero in there and I get x squared equals one. Actually, yeah, let's, I skipped that intermediate step, but um, why not include it? x squared plus zero equals one. So x is plus or minus one. Okay. Um, so then that gives us possible critical points of um, one, zero, and minus one, zero. So this, this is our, our um, list of points to check over here on the right. And let's see, so now backing up, we have the case when lambda is equal to four. That was the second thing we noticed. So for this one, let's see. Then this, the uh, second equation in our system zeroes out. The first equation gives us uh, 2x times minus three is equal to zero, which implies x has to equal zero, which implies um, <coughs> this time, so we've got zero plus y squared equals one. So y is equal to plus or minus one. And that gives us a couple more points to check, namely uh, zero one and zero minus one. Okay, so now we have four places to evaluate f. Um, <clears throat> and n now going back to what we saw before, originally I said, well, we've got lambda equals one, or x equals zero, and we've got lambda equals four, or y equals zero. And we're gonna to have to consider all four of those possibilities. However, in the consideration of just lambda equals one and lambda equals four, we already got the situation where y is equal to zero and x is equal to zero. So those are covered. We don't have to go back and look for them again. In practice, if you do go back and look for them again, nothing bad will happen. You'll just come back with the same answers and you'll have done a little extra work. Um, unnecessary work um, <clears throat> but but it's not an unmitigated tragedy so once you've found all the possibilities then you just evaluate the function there so now notice that f takes the same value at positive and negative one zero because x appears with a, um, a square in, in the objective function. And so when we substitute this in, we get one. And then when we uh, look at zero plus or minus one, uh, we end up with two. And so we've discovered that these are the minimum values and these are the maximum values for this particular function. And to see what that looks like, drop in a picture um, there we go so so you can see that uh, if we look at where X is equal to um, 1 and Y is equal to 0 then we're on this point on the axis and this is um, I've got these color coded so that the blue values represent uh, lower values of X and the orange values are uh, higher values of f. So f is increasing as we go out this way. And you can see they're labeled. So this is where f takes the value three. This is where f takes the value six. 
and so on and so forth. The outermost uh, ellipse here is where f takes the value 8. So, um, so the minima are these ones that are closest to the origin, and then the maxima um, are these ones at uh, the top and the bottom. And, and just like we saw in the last unit, you can see that they are they're tangent. They, uh, the, the level curves of the function are tangent to the uh, constraint equation x squared plus y squared equals 1.